Welcome back. My name is Robert. Let's examine and compare the checkpoint and saving systems of Ori in the Blind Forest and Child of Light. In both games, the core purpose of the checkpoints is to save the user's progress. Child of Light uses an autosave feature with fixed respawn locations. When the user dies or quits the game and then returns, the player will respawn at a predetermined location, usually the start of the level. The user can then return to where they saved the game before, and they'll notice that all previously defeated enemies will be respawned into the game. The player may continuously defeat enemies, quit, and return to them, and keep defeating them to slowly earn experience and level up their characters. This exploit does not work on loot boxes. Once opened, a treasure chest remains opened even after the player quits and returns to the same area. Dying in Child of Light and continuing from the main menu have two dramatically different effects. Upon respawning from death, Aurora will have a portion of her health pool restored. Loading in from the main menu, however, will restore Aurora's hit points to whatever they were when the game saved. Ori and the Blind Forest uses a very different save system. The user must manually save by holding B in a safe area free of any enemies. Not only are the player's hit points and mana resources saved in Ori and the Blind Forest, but so are the statuses of all the enemies nearby. If the user defeats a wave of enemies, saves, and comes back, all of those enemies will still be defeated upon reloading. There is no autosave in Ori and the Blind Forest. Failure to save after grabbing a collectible may result in the player having to repeat setups. Only one soul link may be present at a time. Upon unlocking the ability, the user can opt to reuse one soul link or create a new one in a new location. This concludes my competitive analysis. Thank you for watching.